Holy God and blessed Trinity, we thank you for this great moment when we come together as a church in your presence. You are a holy God and you desire that we be holy. We thank you for your living word that speaks to us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that convicts us of sin. We thank you, Lord, that you dwell in our praises, but we cannot come into your presence when we have not been cleansed. And so, Father, we thank you this morning that when we repent of our sins, when we lay down our burdens at your feet, when we let go of everything we strive for, Lord, you come. You cleanse us, you renew us, and you reconcile us to yourself. And so I'm calling upon each one of you this morning to just take a moment to center yourself in God's presence, to feel his love and mercy, but to confess those things that have divided us, those things that have drawn us away from fellowship with him, the things that have injured his heart and injured our nature. So just take a moment in God's presence and confess to him. We bring all our personal confessions together in the general confession as we seek his grace. Together, almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. When we say that we have no sins, we deceive ourselves. But when we confess our sins to the Almighty God, He is just and faithful to forgive us all our iniquities. May the Almighty God, who promised forgiveness to all who repent and turn back to Him, now forgive you. May He pardon and strengthen you to follow what is good before him. May your sins be forgiven completely. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As we begin the season of Advent, as we remember Christ came for our sins to save us, to redeem us, we also remember his second coming. And together we share in the collect of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the quick and the dead, 
we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever and ever shall be. Amen. We continue to worship the Lord in song. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pra COVID or no COVID, we praise the Lord. Why don't we give God a big hand clap of praise and a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I, I know you are in masks, but I can see someone smiling. Please smile as you give God a big hand clap and a shout. Now clap, do not stop. Clap, clap your hands unto Jesus. Lord, we bless you for your faithful. Come on, come on, come on. You're faithful. Faithful to the end. The greater I am, the God who said that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us. this university shall prosper. No weapon formed against our families shall prosper. And we condemn every time that rises against us. So we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise, our God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are a winner. Makerere, you are a winner in Christ. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we are winners. Even when situations seem like they are crumbling. Now there's this song that is very simple. It goes, when you... When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. You just slip like that thing. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. It's okay to dance. When you see me shout, I shout like a winner man. Yes, even jumping and clapping, you get it. Then there is fast that says, Oh, winner man. Oh, we man. Oh, we Oh, we man. Oh, we Okay, you got it. Clap those hands and rejoice unto the Lord. For his good is faithful and his mercy is unjust forever. Let me give us. I will bless you, Lord, for your grace for my life. You have blessed me, O oh Father, now I dance like a winner man. Bless you, Lord, for your grace for my life. You have blessed me, O oh Father, now I dance like a winner man. I will bless you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have favored me, O oh Father, now I dance like a winner man. See me dance, I dance like a winner man. Dance, Come on, let me see you dancing. Like if you're a winner, when you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. When you see me clap, I clap like a winner man. Hey, when you see me wave, I wave like a winner man. See me jump, I jump like a winner man. Let me see winners jumping. Oh, winner man. Oh, winner man. Oh, winner man. Just lift your hand and say, Oh, winner man. Say, Oh, winner man. Oh, winner man. Bye, 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 bye,
When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. I don't belong like a winner man. When you see me shaka, I shaka like a winner man. When you see me tambila, I tambila like a winner man. from whom all blessings flow. The holy God that none compares with. The God who is able to do exceeding things. Even when we are in distress, you do exceeding things, you do mighty things. How we love you, God. How we bless you. Come on, just tell him, God, I don't care what I feel, I bless you. Come on, speak in your own words. I don't care what I feel, I bless you for you a mighty God, there is none like you. Just worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are holy. Holy God. Are you Lord God Almighty? Lift your voices and say, What is the land? Sing to the Lord. What is the land? You are holy. You are holy. Yes, you are holy. Are you Lord? Are you Lord God Almighty? What is the land? What is
just lift your voice and say, Lord, you are worthy. You are holy. You deserve all the glory and all the honor. Worship him and praise his holy name. We give you thanks, King of Kings. We give you glory and all the honor. We lift your name on high in this place. In our midst, King, King of Kings, be lifted on high. We thank you, Jesus, that you've given us opportunity to be in your presence. We thank for those that are following us live on TV, through the media. Thank you, give you glory for their lives. Thank you, Jesus, for the, each one of us gathered in this sanctuary this morning. Honor and glory be unto your holy name. We thank for Makere University, for the vice chancellor and, and, and all the team that he, he leads. We thank for the students doing exams and those that, that, that others have finished. We give you glory and the honor. We thank you, Jesus, King of Kings, for the staff. And this moment, we even remember the family of uh, Chris that has gone to be with the Lord. We pray that you comfort and strengthen the entire university and the family, King of Kings. We thank you, Lord, for this nation. We thank you for the church. We thank you for each individual gathered in this place. We thank you for the team from Kabanyoro, King of Kings, that have joined us this morning. We give you glory and the honor. And we thank you for your church and for the leadership. King of Kings, continue to guide each one of us to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We will affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join the words of the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the faith for the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Please be steady for the ministry of the word, and thereafter the chaplain will come. The word today comes from Psalm 119, beginning from verse 100. Psalm 119, beginning from verse 100. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me I, how sweet are your words for my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I'll follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept 
O oh Lord, the willing, accept, O oh Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. This is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. We need to welcome those who are standing out there, ushers. People are standing out there. They can, there are screens outside, and uh, you should get them chairs. You should get them chairs. We would like to welcome you all to St. Francis Chapel, Makerere University for the nine o'clock service. And those following, welcome to this webcast, streaming live from St. Francis Chapel, Makere University. We know many are following, I know some families in the United States of America that never go to bed until they have worshiped with us. Our friends from South Korea, and the St. Franciscans in the diaspora all over the world, you're welcome. We welcome the family TV audience uh, enriching lives, and we thank God for our partnership with you. And all of you friends, welcome. And uh, while smiling with your eyes, uh, please do smile at your neighbor. You know, eyes communicate a lot. Eyes communicate a lot. If you're angry, can you tell through somebody's eyes that they're they are angry? Okay. What about when somebody is sleepy? Sleepy, can you tell through their eyes? Aha. Uh -huh. What about when somebody loves you? <laughs> I, think, I think most of you are familiar with that. <laughs> So eyes communicate a lot. This is the new normal, and we must learn to do things differently. In fact, I want to thank, where is Timothy? Uh, Mwaka, please call him. I want to thank uh, Timothy Mwaka, who is the minister in charge of worship and arts, for one reason. This is the Timothy. This is the man who is in charge of uh, the Ministry of Worship and Arts. And uh, he's doing a good job. I want to thank you publicly. <clears throat> because this is the first time the praise team has sung with their face masks on. <laughs> Did you hear their voices? Very good. So from now onward, this is how you always sing. Thank you very much. You clap for him again. Thank you, my brother. Now, students who are here and you have done your exams, you have finished your exams, raise your hands. Oh, quite a number. Are you there in the galleries? Okay, very good, very good. We bless the Lord for you. This is where now the rest of the students say, hey mama, hey mama. <laughs> but you will also get there. Amen? And how many of you are still doing your exams? Oh, everybody, okay. How many of you are yet to begin? You're starting your exams tomorrow. Very good. Your exams are sorted out because the Archbishop is here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, in order to redeem time, we are going to do two things simultaneously. I will be sharing a few notices as we also give our gifts to God. Amen? So let us now joyfully bring our gifts to God. Amen and amen. And of course, uh, our friends online, 
You can also follow the uh, prompts and give to the Lord online. Thank you for welcoming us in the comfort of your living rooms. And of course, uh, our friends out there in the tent, we acknowledge your presence and uh, the Lord loves you. <laughs> Amen. Ushers, please move quickly and expedite uh, that, that work. Now this is the long awaited for day when we welcome the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, the Most Reverend Dr. Stephen Kazimba Mugalu. Your Grace, you are welcome to St. Francis Chapel, Makere University, on this your maiden pastoral visit to us, and we bless the Lord. Thank you, cameraman, for zooming him in so that the people in the galleries and elsewhere can see him. And uh, we are so grateful to God that you planned to pay a visit to us uh, officially, and we bless the Lord. The Archbishop is the ninth Archbishop of the Church of Uganda and the eighth Bishop of the Diocese of Kampala. And so he's here in those two capacities. Of course, you can't separate his role as an Archbishop and he, uh, from that of a Bishop of uh, the Diocese of Kampala. You are most welcome. Let us Again, make him feel welcome, please. The Archbishop has come with uh, his son, uh, Dr. Joseph uh, Kazimba over there. He likes to identify with the youth. Please welcome him. He's among you, but welcome him. And the Archbishop has also come with his uh, chaplain, Reverend Johnson Kansime. <laughs> Welcome, my brother. I did that work that you're doing for seven years, so I appreciate your ministry. And in the company of the Archbishop, is uh, a good man, and I want you to come, young man, uh, quickly. That young man is called Daniel. Where is Julia? You come as well, like young people. Don't say me. Aha, that's right. Now I had the I had the privilege of uh, becoming their go-between. And in the, pre in the company of the Archbishop is their father, Canon John Awadi, <laughs> the Diocesan Secretary of the Diocese of Kampala. You're welcome, my brother. And I think I've made your day. <laughs> okay? And uh, the Archbishop also came with a young man who does the ministry of uh, ensuring that the Archbishop moves from place to place. Salongo Godwin at Quatriri. I don't know whether he's here. He's always taking care of, uh, uh, his, uh, of his airplane. So we welcome you, Your Grace, and uh, before you as St. Franciscans, but in a very special way, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the CEO of uh, Makere University, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, who has come with his dear wife, uh, Susan Nawangwe. Uh, please do welcome uh, the Vice Chancellor. Thank you. And, and they are St. Franciscans, so this is, this is home for you, you know. Those of you who attend 7 o'clock service, you know that he's always here. And we bless the Lord for you. You're a God-fearing man. 
and God gave you a, a, a ball of fire, a prayer warrior as a wife, uh, this, 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 if you want trouble with the, with the, with, with the, with the VC, you, you, you provoke him. The kind of prayers that will come, <laughs> they are unbearable. We thank God for you, uh, Aunt Susan. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, of course, we condole with you uh, upon the loss of uh, Mr. Chris Chitare, who was an assistant. I'll pray for the gifts and thereafter invite his grace to share with us the word of God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the visit of your servant and those who are in his company. We praise you for this uh, first Sunday of Advent as we reflect on uh, the birth of the Savior of the world, the reason for the season, Jesus Christ. We pray that, Father, you will continue to be honored and glorified in our lives, in our homes, those who are following. And Lord, for what has been given in terms of money, online or in the physical, we pray that you would receive it and set it apart for the extension of your kingdom. And bless all those who have given, for it's more blessed to give than to receive. And those who look to you for provision, we ask you, Jehovah Jireh, to provide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please put your hands together like never before and welcome His Grace, the Archbishop. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Lord, we bless you and we exhort you. We magnify your holy name for your children here present. May you bless them. Reach out to someone who is hurting and one who finds life so rough and tough. May you bless all your children here present. Speak your word through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You allow me, uh, since I'm far from you, and I'm using my, on my microphone, so that uh, those of you are seeing the first time, you could definitely know the person, the real, real one. <laughs> I want to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom all blessings flow. And we thank God for the fire he has brought us. He is our God. Even amidst challenges, he cares. He reaches out to us to comfort us. He stretches his hand to bless us. He's a God who was, who is, and who will be. The same God, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The one who understands all of us. This is the God who knew your end before you knew your beginning. Therefore, he has a plan for each one of you. He's a God who has a plan. You are here for a purpose. God never brought you without a purpose. And that purpose will be accomplished because he's our God. And he has a future for you. Praise the Lord. So we are here to say thank you, God, for the far you have brought us. He is the God who can challenge every challenge, which is challenging you. He's the one who can oppose every position which is opposing you. He's the one who can disorganize whatever is coming to disorganize you. He disorganizes it. His name is Jesus. The source of power. So to God be the glory. I am so grateful to God today 
that God has made to come to pass that I'm here. Thank you, uh, Chaplain, for receiving me very well. And your staff, thank you so, so much. I'm uh, specifically grateful to meet uh, my professor, Diana, to God be the glory. <laughs> she knows uh, her husband were once my uh, teachers in the surgical college. So thank you so much. All the, your team here, they are my friends. To God be the glory, you have a wonderful team. Thank you so much for the wonderful congregation. Thanks be to God for this wonderful university and for the vice chancellor, my friend. Thanks be to God and all your staff. I know you are here around this time where there are tough times, but God makes us tougher when things are becoming tougher. God can make you a setback to be a setup for your comeback. He's our God who makes a way where it is not. Like now, the, I am the ninth archbishop, an archbishop installed on 1st March, and a bishop of Ocampa installed on 8th March, and they after a lockdown. Why? But I discovered something. The Lord wanted me to apply the new tools. You know, the old tools cannot counteract the new challenges. We need new tools for new challenges. Live streaming, new normal, television, radio. This is the way to go. I have been reaching out to many people every Sunday than I would have reached to because we use the new tools. You know, whenever there's a chat, turn it into an opportunity. Whenever there is a challenge, God can turn it into a blessing. There are many blessings. Like now, I can see the church is looking well. There is, you know, talazo everywhere. Because COVID, which is a challenge, gave you a chance to have time to, to put this church in order. Because there are no people coming here. So whenever there is anything, always look for an opportunity out of it and a blessing out of that. Because in each and everything, there is a lesson. Listen to the words of St. Paul. In all things. In all things. What is that? God works together according to his will. So, I want to thank God. And I want to those who have lost the Indians, and also the vice chancellor and our university for the burning of our icon. This is something that really hurt all of us, which came shortly after, you know, uh, demolishing the church building at Indeva. We have evil people. But even those evil people, they will always be losers and will be winners in Jesus' name. So... And we pray for those who are sick. For those who, are, who have lost their dear ones during the uh, violence the other week, I pray that God will help us to stabilize. Violence is not good for anybody. We need always to look for dialogue. We need to look for peaceful means of putting things right. For those who are going all over, burning, even, uh, you know, tires, we destroy our own property. Like you would go and riot and destroy your own dormitory or, or, or hall. So we always we should be careful. Uh, even when we are angry, let us remain Christians so that God will be glorified. But we also want to warn the, uh, the fertility organs so that they guard against excessive force because this is not good for any one of us. Not good. Sometimes uh, uh, security organs are provoking the people and sometimes the people are provoking, provoking them. So let us avoid extremes. Extremes are not good. They are not good for all of us. I have a couple I waited some time back when I was a parish priest at Katente because I come from Chagwe. 
I am a typical Mukunja, but a transformed Mukunja from Chagwe. Uh, then I, I waited a cup, but uh, this, uh, they came to me after some time, you know, they put things right. This lady and this, this man, in a, a couple, they are staying together, but whenever the woman was angry, she could go and get all the, get the bed sheets, blanket, and cut them into pieces. Could go and get the plates and destroy them and the cups. So they came to, to me and the husband said, you, you better talk to my wife. They came together in a romantic mood to my house as if nothing had happened. Then I asked, what's the problem? This one gets angry and he breaks all the things. And I asked her, why are you doing that? Oh, Reverend, when I'm hungry, really. But it doesn't take long. Two minutes, then I stabilize. Then she comes back to the husband. Daddy, do you have any money so that I can buy a cup where I can serve you? You know, you can get angry and destroy your own thing. So, even when we are angry, let us remain Christians so that we don't destroy our own thing. You can destroy something which will really help you in the future. How about if you are destroyed, you go in the library and you, you burn all the books which would help you to pass. So let us always, you know, remain a Christian. And this is actually what is the reason for Advent. This is the first Sunday in Advent. There are four Sundays. And uh, after the four Sundays, then you go into Christmas. This is actually... Uh, about when you, uh, when you read the uh, books in the Bible and uh, all the purpose of Advent, it's about renewing our faith. It's about recommitting our faith. It's about revival. It's about reconnection. It's about revitalization. It's about being, you know, renewed and revival. That's what... Uh, uh, Actually, uh, Advent is about that. But today, I want to talk about mostly on the Word of God. And we are going to be a walking Bible. You know, this is a, a Bible week which begins today. It's a Bible week and I want to thank God for Bible Society and for the work of translating the Word of God into different languages for us and for helping us to access the word of God. And you know, the word of God is uh, the light to our darkness and the guide to our feet. This is what we've read in Psalms 109 verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet a light on my path. So to God be the glory. My wife prayed for me. She, um, we are coming together, but we've been traveling a lot and she wasn't feeling well. But uh, she, she prayed for me as I prayed for her this morning that I could share this word. The word of God is a lamp for my feet. The love of God, the, the word of God should be the light even amidst darkness. We've been reading the word of God as a family. Uh, we are a family of uh, many children, but biologically we have four boys. Uh, the first one whom we, are, we have uh, uh, ordained and uh, the second one who is a student here, pursuing his masters in information systems, but working. The third one is a, a commercial um, pilot, but also an instructor of pilots. And uh, the last one is this young man uh, who is here. He just finished and came back from Bala University after writing the last exam for his degree in medicine and surgery. But we have many others, spiritual children. So boys, that's why uh, I know when we are reading the word of God, I know how it helps 
even when you have the boys at home. You know, we read the word of God and then you watch soccer because I support Uganda Cranes. I support Arsenal. <laughs> so, like that one supports Man U, another one Chelsea Palace, I still support Arsenal. So, we need to be determined. We need to be committed. Even if things are not going your direction, like Arsenal, we've been losing, but now we are picking. <laughs> we are now doing better. Yeah, yeah. So, life is not, is not supposed to be straight. There are always challenges, but you must stick to God and his word. Even in soccer, even in soccer, his word. We must be committed like uh, candidate uh, Katumba, who is very dynamic, one from here, committed to pursue it. He's in order to become the president of Uganda when the vehicle is not there. He said, don't waste my time. So life is not about smoothness. We must be committed to go forward. What come may, come and buy and buy. We must go forward in the name of Jesus. And there's no way without the word of God, which is supposed to be a lamp and a light to guide us. Hallelujah. These Psalms were written by David. But of course, he wasn't alone. If there was a, a book written here in the university, obviously the vice chancellor or the chancellor would be the author, even though some others would be contributing from other faculties. But he's a big man. Now David was a king. He wrote out of uh, 100, uh, out of 150 um, chapter. Uh, Psalms, he was, uh, I mean, he contributed to 70 only, 70. Others were written by Asaf and others. But he's the guy, you know, when you're a big man, you're a big man. The reason for writing these Psalms is to praise God. These were also songs of praise. These were also prayers for repentance. These were also uh, prayers for supplications, for forgiveness. And in this world, he realized we are in darkness. That's why he said the word of God. And this word of God, which is put in the Bible, is very powerful. The word of God is put in uh, the Bible. These are 66, 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, and 27 in the New Testament. How many chapters? The Bible is having 1,189 chapters. But we also have 31,103 verses. Very powerful. It's a library. This is the word of God. For what? For teaching. For rebuking. For correcting for training in righteousness. How can we believe that the Bible is the word of God? How can we? These scholars, they have many arguments, but I picked very important uh, points, five of them, and I'll be brief, because I come from an evangelical uh, background. Point number one, why the Bible is the word of God, one, because of its transforming power. The word of God, the Bible, is the only book which has the power to transform lives. Not any other. Not any other. Nobody can give a testimony that I read a number of books for anatomy and ecology then I got saved. I was transformed. You may read the volumes and the volumes of the book of ecology, anatomy, satology, taxonomy, zoology, geology, anthropology. No one can give a testimony. You see, I was a chain smoker 
But after reading this book of biology, I was totally transformed. That has never happened. Actually, there are many medical doctors who know the danger of smoking. They don't have the power to stop smoking. Because all the books around them have no power. The only book that has the power is the word of God. The word of God. It transformed me on 7th March 1984 at 9 a.m. in the morning. I come from a polygamous family. My father had three wives, sometimes four, depending on the season. <laughs> it was a season of cotton, another wife. A season of, a season of coffee, another wife. Can you imagine the word of God touching me and God has a tendency of picking a nobody to become somebody in front of everybody without consulting anybody. That is the word of God. It's transforming power. Two, it's fulfilled prophecy. You know, like the birth of Jesus was prophesied in Isaiah and, uh, and other books, and it it was fulfilled after 400 years. It's fulfilled the prophecy is an indicative that this is not just a mere book. It's the word of God. Also, this is the book with a message for all people in all seasons. Everyone who has a message. Those who are backsliding, you have a message. Those who have lost relationships, you have a message there. Like stand firm. Actually, God may have helped you that this man or this lady disappointed you because you were are, you are going with a mad man who would disorganize you. So you may say, no, I don't know what to do because this younger man is not there. Did you come with him, really? God saved you from this man. So there is a message for the widows. There is a message for the orphans. There is a message for the oppressed. There is a message for the depressed. There is a message for the displaced. There is a message for the distressed. There is a message for those who are insulted. The message You have a message in the Lord of God and here is to be encouraged. Those who are about to do exams, who are doing exams, you have a message that God who is in you is stronger than exams. He is going to give you comfort. This is the book which he has refused to grow old. It is the only book. I was doing my, my studies in America in 2002 and uh, I, did, I wrote an assignment and I had nice books but my professor told me Stephen, you have a wonderful essay but you used all the books. The books of, uh, this was 2002, I used books of 2000. You know in Michigan there are publishers, even my, my, my teachers, they say you better consult other books. But the word of God, the Bible will never grow old. It's the only book which has remained young, it is as new as tomorrow's cake. That's the message you need to go with. And the last point, it has passed all the tests of persecutions of oh, the word of God. Actually, it's the only book which is in many, many homes all over the world. So may God help us to read it, not only read it, but obey not only obey it, but live by the word. And I want to conclude by inviting you that this word, we should be a walking Bible. You know, you can read it, you can have many verses, but if you don't live by it, you may have wonderful verses for nothing. You see, Reverend Onesimus, a handsome man, there are many verses written here, everywhere. So, when he is walking, people may not remember what he preached, but they can remember, they can see the verses. We should be walking Bibles so that our actions speak louder than the words. You can be born again, 
But when your actions are different, then your salvation is very good for nothing. Let us live by the word, obey it, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is this chorus. Read your Bible and pray every day. And I request to stand up and day after a benediction. Read your Bible, pray. many verses in the Bible do you have in your mind? Do it. How often do you obey the word? By the way, is the, the word of God the Bible your friend? Now, go with God. Because God has already gone ahead of you. Go with God because God is following you. Go with God because God is surrounding you. You are not alone. Go with God. He is above you to bless you. And he is below you to support you. Go with God. And the peace of God, which transcends human understanding, keep you all in the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, and the blessings of God the Father without the sorrow of the Son. The Holy Spirit rest upon you all. These blessings be to you, and I render the devil powerless, and I take the devil the captive. Be blessed now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. No, we can do better than that. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let us first of all appreciate God's servant, the Archbishop, for preaching such a powerful sermon. This is, this is what you call a powerful sermon. And I believe each one of us has picked a word that uh, you will hang on uh, for the rest of your life. You know, those who have read books and here, this is, the, this is now the, the highest concentration of brains. You've read books and you know that those books cannot transform you. They, they only inform you. And uh, I have also picked a very powerful phrase that God can get hold of your setback and set it up. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And those of us who have been disappointed, those of us who have been chucked, eh? chucked by some guy, or some babe. <laughs> the Lord was saving you from evil. You know, the Lord was saving you. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And thank you for your, your grace for acknowledging publicly. Uh, that was really very affirming that I am handsome. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, and when you said that, I looked at Mrs. Me, and you have made my day. You have really, yes. Now we bless the Lord for, oh, what a beautiful, what a beautiful presence of the Lord. And uh, you know that according to the regulations uh, given by the Ministry of Health, we're not supposed to congregate for a long time. That's why we have a one-hour service. And the Archbishop has kept the time in preaching. So uh, what remains now, we are going to have uh, a few remarks, a few please, whoever is called to say something. Uh, the Archbishop has, you know, set up a good example. It's be brief and precise because among us, um, among those who came to meet you, we have uh, our friends from the Cabanyoro. Some good things are coming from, from Cabanyoro. And uh, the priest in charge is, you have called her Professor? No, oh, that's, that's interesting to know. Professor Rev D. <laughs> Uh, we have the Lugba community, uh, the Reverend Scovia Kumagum is the priest in charge of the Lugba community. We have got uh, Mother's Union, Mother's Union Oye, uh -huh, they are here. We have the Christian Women Fellowship, we have students, of course, uh, university is about students, and uh, we have the CEO of uh, the university, the wise man from the east. And so we'll have just a few remarks. I'm going to invite the people's warden, uh, Peter Kiza, who is a potential governor of the Bank of Uganda to lead us in this session. We shall be sanitizing the mics, so please sanitize mics and put them close. Uh, we have a number of them, so just sanitize and put them here. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Jesus Oye. Jesus Oye. Makerere Oye. Uganda Oye. We thank the Lord so much. What a beautiful day and what a beautiful time. And we're just going to have a few speeches. The person speaking to you has been introduced. I'm also a nobody who became somebody in front of everybody. So, without the permission of anybody. <laughs> right. So, we're going to have a few speeches. I'm asking you to be um, patient. And I'm going to ask or reiterate what the chaplain has said. We will be brief. We will start with the student representative. Are you here? Student representative, please come. And then following that, we shall have a speech from the Mother's Union. Okay. So please, um, I don't know the protocol of microphones here. They will get, okay. Yeah, His Grace, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, uh, the Vice Chancellor, Makere University, and your wife, the chaplain, the clergy present, the visitors and fellow St. Franciscans, praise the Lord. Uh, on behalf of students, Makere University, uh, thank you. My name is Enoch Ataile, a third year student of Makere University, doing Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. Uh, on behalf of the students, allow me, Your Grace, to thank you for this momentous visit at a time when we really needed you the more, at a time when we were struggling with uh, three big giants, one being the academic,
pressure because of exams. Uh, second being the global pandemic, which is COVID-19. And thirdly, uh, as we are in the process of healing from the burning of the ivory tower. Uh, allow me, Your Grace, to quote a few words from your speech as you are being enthroned as the ninth Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. God has called us to be wounded healers, bridge builders, and conduits of blessings, hope, healing, and forgiveness. And so, Your Grace, we believe your coming has brought us great hope of success in our exams as we struggle to work hard. Uh, your coming has brought us hope of staying safe as we keep the SOP set by the Minister of Health. And finally, your coming has given us great hope of healing from the pain of the loss and the burning of the Ivory Tower, and we believe for restoration. May God bless you. We are so happy to, visit, to, to, to receive you as our visitor this day. May God rich bless you. Thank you. Thank you, students' representative, for that speech. I now invite Mrs. Sarah Lee on, on behalf, see you on behalf of Mother's Union, to come and give their speech. And following that, we'll have the representative from the Lugbara community. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Wow. Your Grace, the chaplain and all the clergy, the vice chancellor and the congregants this morning. Praise the Lord. Your Grace, you will allow me to remove my mask so that you see the chair of Mother's Union. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I am Mrs. Sarah Langasiu. Allow me to introduce my dear husband. I request you to come briefly. Your Grace, there are many handsome men here, not only the chaplain, even mine. So Your Grace, we are most honored this morning to welcome you as Mother's Union. We equally congratulate you upon taking over office as the ninth Archbishop of the Republic of Uganda. Your Grace, outside here, I am the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, and I am so honored to have you as the Archbishop. We are all in new times and new seasons with many challenges, but your word that you have shared this morning, the word of God, keeps encouraging us and going forward. Today, I think, is a day for those who were nothing that God has made something. I am one of those ones who comes from far in the east, in a town that nobody knows much about, particularly a village called Bumanda. I think nobody has heard. Maybe it's not on Google Maps, but God has brought me here. Your Grace. I am a pastor's child. My mother was the late Reverend Canon Lucy Langa, the first lady reverend in the Diocese of Bukedi. And so we have grown in the church. We have seen Mother's Union. And right now, I am very happy that for the last four years, by God's grace, I've been leading this ministry here. So you're welcome. We congratulate you. We have missed Mama Margaret. Send her our love but there is something to take home for her. This comes with a lot of love. We are very many. We are almost reaching 300 in terms of membership here, but this is a new normal. So I'll just request the rest of the members who are here so we hand over the gift for Mama. May the gift be a blessing to you. Thank you, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mother's Union. <laughs> I will now like to invite a representative from the Lugbara community to come and give a few remarks. Is she here if she's not ready because of time? 
I'll move on to representative from Cabanyoro. Representative from Cabanyoro, welcome. Your Grace, the Vice Chancellor, and I call you Mama Susan, our dear chaplain, and all of you here. Cabanyolo will be in the 11 o'clock service, but I'm representing them for now. Your Grace, it's been a great privilege to lead the congregation at Cabanyolo. It was started by the young marrieds of this church and has its purpose is to minister to the agricultural students, the horticulture students, food and nutrition second year students. And we have grown even during COVID. Sadly, this week, we lost one of our members to COVID, Barbara as she mourns her dear husband. It was sudden, and we, 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 we walk with her in ways that we can. Um, we are an agricultural research institute of Makerere University. And sir, I want to thank you for the land that has been allocated to us to build the chapel. At now, when I told the congregation that the Archbishop was visiting, we got so excited. We got so emotional. And we only did it in a way that agricultural people can do it. So, sir, we got on a bus. We went all the way to Ibanda. And we went to a dairy farm. We looked for a heifer, which was in calf. <laughs> the heifer there, you see, is in calf. And this is one of the best dairy farms we have. That cow we really believed will give milk to doctor, the boys. <laughs> it will give milk for mama to serve her visitors at home. And um, yes, in some communities in Uganda, giving a cow is the only way we can express that we love you very much. And so for now, we are keeping it. We almost did, you know, the village thing. You know we are villagers. We almost brought it here, but we were, we were advised otherwise. So please accept our gift, and may God richly bless you as you serve the Lord in this diocese. Thank you, Rev. D for that speech and the gift. I will now ask the representative from Cabanyoro to come and give a few remarks. Ah, sorry, from the representative from Lugbara. <laughs> Welcome, Reverend Scovia. Your mic is here. Thank you so much. Your grace, I'll want to do it in Lugbara way. Karubu mini ambu. Ambo, Ambo, Amaimi, Yesu Marusi. Um, we are very excited to have you today. You're very, very welcome. We are very proud people because in this great university, we are the only people who are allowed to speak, who are allowed to worship in our own, own language. We are really very, very happy. We are very proud. We want to thank God very, very much. 
And as a bishop, we really want to say thank you very much for allowing us to worship in our own language. Thank you very much, our dear chaplain, for accepting us to be in this great union. Uh, allow me call upon Mr. David Atidri, wherever you are, kindly come. As Lubara community, we have something very small, but it's from the bottom of our hearts. We love you so, so much. Kindly allow me hand over this mic to Mr. Atidri David to say a word and present whatever we have. Thank you. Your Grace, the Archbishop of the Province of Church of Uganda, the Chaplain, St. Francis Chapel, brethren, praise the Lord. On behalf of the Lubara community, we thought again and again and realized that because of the schedules of the Archbishop, sometimes it becomes difficult to wash clothes and do a few other things. And so as a church, we decided that we would buy a washing machine. We couldn't carry it here, but it is outside. Your grace, this is the washing machine. Thank you once again. Oh, we thank God for those wonderful gifts. Can we just give thanks to the Lord God? I will now give the speech from the head of Leyte on behalf of the Chapel Council, Makere University. Our great, your grace, the Archbishop, you are most welcome to this great institution of Makerere, and specifically St. Francis Chapel where we worship. I would just like to ask any chapel council members who are here, are there any council members who are here? If you are there, just stand up, please. You are here. Yes. As I'm, I'm still, okay, this, we seem to be two of us, but that's that, that's, that, that's representative enough. I would like to borrow from the scripture that's in Psalm 108 that says, I will give thanks to thee, O God, amongst the people. I will sing praises to thee amongst the nations. For his steadfast love is great. And his faithfulness extends to the skies. That is the blessing you walk in, your grace, the archbishop. And the Lord, whose masses are in your term of office, we believe that God is going to restore the church and the nation. And I just also want to prophesy over that building, Mr. Visi, that building will be restored to seven times its glory. And I want to simply say that the congregation loves you, your grace, the Archbishop. And we have a few gifts to offer you and your team. Receive them. These are very tangible gifts and very unique from the cow and the washing machine. <laughs> but they're all a symbol of our love to you. So I'll start by humbly requesting you, Your Grace the Archbishop, to receive this grace, this gift, sorry, on behalf of the congregation of St. Francis Chapel, Makere, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. I'll also invite 
Reverend Canon John Awadi, the Diocesan Secretary. We also bless you. You're one of us, and you keep coming to us. But may the Lord God continue to grant you his favor as you serve him in Jesus' name. I also want to invite the Reverend Johnson Kasime, the chaplain of the Archbishop. This is our love to you. May his grace continually sustain you as you serve the Archbishop Sebo. And last but not least, I don't know whether the driver is around or someone can re receive his gift on our behalf. Please take this to our dear friend. Um, he's called Godwin, I believe. He's called Godwin. Salongo. Tell Salongo that the grace of God is abundant, even as he serves the Lord. Thank you. Let's. St. Francis, this is your gift to the Archbishop. Can you clap for yourself? I would now like to invite the chaplain to welcome the vice chancellor to give his remarks to the congregation. Please welcome the chaplain, don't get tired. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremonies, uh, Brother Peter Kiza. It is now my singular honor and pleasure to invite you, the Vice Chancellor of Makere University, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, to give your remarks. Chaplain and your team, my dear wife and warrior, prayer warrior, not warrior in other senses, my fellow St. Franciscans, and especially our dear students. I have the honor to welcome you to Makere University. I am exceedingly happy this morning to welcome you to Makere University for several reasons. I don't know if many of you know that when our iconic building burnt, the Archbishop was among the first people to come here. <laughs> and announced so I didn't even know, because I was in a meeting. We want to thank you for that gesture. And to tell you that he's the only head of a faith in Uganda who came when we got to that tragedy. Your Grace, I have been following your sermons on TV and I have been inspired by the messages that you send out to the nation. I have also been inspired by the message that you sent to the nation two days ago when you were talking about the violence that befell our country. And the message was, we are one people. Let us learn to live together peacefully. That was a very strong message, and we thank you very much for that. I have been greatly inspired by your sermon this morning. 
you say you come from a humble background, then you are in a good company. Because I come from the humblest background. I have been counting the number of times President Museveni has said I come from the most remote village in, the, in Uganda. It is now ten times. That is an endorsement of the fact that I come from a very remote background. Very remote village in Uganda, in Busia. Even as the Reverend Onesimus wants to say at every opportunity, he says a wise man from the East. <laughs> Maybe that confirms your saying about God making a nobody, becoming a somebody without anybody's permission. I believe that it is by God's grace that coming from this very humble background, but because of the deep religious beliefs of my parents, even as I came from a very humble background, many times stepping over snakes when I was going to school, that I became the vice chancellor of the best black university on earth. Your Grace, I hope you don't mind if I tell the congregation that in about a week's time, I will be hosting His Grace in Busia. <laughs> to inaugurate a library that my wider family has helped to put at the primary school where I studied and where my father was a head teacher for a long time, but which still looks very remote. And we don't take that for granted that he accepted to come to a very remote village to inaugurate a library. We look forward to receiving you, Your Grace. Thank you very much for the powerful sermon. And I'm sure that our students are inspired. I'm sure that for the first time, you are all going to pass all these examinations. <laughs> Let me just join in by wishing you my own good wishes for success in your examinations. Your colleagues have been here. They have done the examinations quietly and gone. They never participated in it. They knew what brought them. I know you also know what brought you. Read your books even as you pray to God that you pass. And as Reverend Nunezima said for you, your passing is already sorted. <laughs> Your Grace, the only thing that the university has is talent. Because, as has been emphasized time and over, this is the top black university on earth. It means the best brains in Africa are here. And we have great talent. So the students came up with a gift to you because of their talent. I will ask my prayer warrior to come and do it in the Kiganda way. Please, come and hand over this gift from Makere University to his grace. 
and we shall, after this, be destroying that beautiful wrapping so that the congregation can see what the students have given you. <laughs> can I request this young man to use all the force he has to tear apart this? <laughs> Just tear it. Just don't save anything. Just tear it. The important things are inside. Just tear the other one. Just pull it out now. Your Grace, this is a pencil drawing of your portrait by a student. So once again, you are most welcome and we thank you very much for your visit and wish you all the best. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Macquarie University. Another hand of applause. God is good. I will now invite the chaplain again to invite the diocesan secretary, who will then invite the archbishop to give his speech. Amen. Thank you very much. May I now? Humbly request you, the Diocesan Secretary, to uh, do the same. Uh, your Grace, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, Most Reverend Dr. Stephen Samuel Kazimba Mugalu, the Vice Chancellor. Makere University and your team. Today is not my day, but I felt I needed to just say one thing and then I would invite His Grace. For some of us, this is a very special place. We came here as students, St. Francis Chapel Makere University contributed a great deal to adding value to the academic credentials some of us had to go through to attain. And so when we are in this place, and I want to appeal to all the students who are here, please, when you are here, don't just take this place for granted that it is only a place for worship. Yes, it is a place for worship, but it is a place for formation and transformation so that you become the leaders of integrity. Needs each one of us. Needs people of integrity. And so your grace, as you come to address your flock, I just felt I needed to remind ourselves about that fact that this place is very central in the formation and transformation of leaders of this country. 
Your grace, you're welcome. Thank you so much, our Dawson Secretary Kampala, our dear Vice Chancellor, and your dear wife, ministers here present, and every person here. Once again, I want to thank you very much. Thank you for receiving us only. There is this gentleman here, um, Mr. Henry uh, Mugisha. This is a, a man who was blind, literally blind for how many years? Six years. And Reverend Onesimus prayed for him, and he now is able to see. He was going to school in a, a girl's school, and this girl's school for the blind, and he was a boy. So when the Lord healed him, they wanted to take him away from the school because he had seen the girls, and uh, people were scared. But uh, the, good Lord, the, the good Lord saved him. So all the girls there were safe. To God be the glory. I want to appreciate you all for receiving us here. I want to appreciate Makere University for dedicating this place for the church so that God is worshipped. Thank you very, very much. And I know from history, it was specifically dedicated that the Protestants should worship here. So thank you very much. And I want to thank you all for the support from the university, supporting the ministers, and also supporting the province of the Church of Uganda. This St. Francis Chapel is supporting us indeed. So to God be the glory, thank you very much, and may God bless you. And supporting the Diocese of Kampala as well. We are so grateful. I want to thank you for uh, the nice words. Thank you. Christians from Kabanyoro, we are so grateful. From the Rukbara community, thank you very much. Mother Zinion, CWF, and everybody of you. I want to appreciate our gift from the university. I appreciate the gift, gifts from this uh, congregation. We are so grateful. May God bless you and keep you. Listen to these words, which are very, very important. And uh, uh, from Mark Twain, Twain, T-W, a -I -N. He says, love is the only language a blind person can read. Love is the only sound a deaf person can hear. Love is the only jargon a foreigner understands best. So thank you very much for speaking the language called love. And that language is the language of Jesus Christ. So may God bless you and keep you. Thank you so much for giving to the students. May God help you. You must go through the pressure because pressure leads to pressure. <laughs> but if you want to begin with the pressure, you will end up in pressure. So have the pressure and pressure. May you please stand up for a benediction. <clears throat> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, mm, oh, fear is gone. Gone because 
face tomorrow. You can. I want to thank God for the VC and for the work he's doing in the village. What a blessing. May God bless you all to remember your homes, to remember your villages. Let us sing that chorus again in a prayer mode. Because he lives, oh, I can Oh, Now go with God. And the peace of God, which passes human understanding, keep you all in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessings of God without sorrow, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit rest upon all of you. These blessings be to all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory indeed. And those who are still following, thank you for your patience. And, uh, and all of you, thank you for your patience. The 11 o'clock service will be starting soon. So this is how we are going to exit. You will all remain in your position. Uh, for the recession, and uh, we'll ask uh, the Vice Chancellor and uh, Mama Susan to please come with us so we can take a, a photograph with the Archbishop for St. Francis Chapel calendar for the year 2021. <laughs> and uh, please use the exits later because we need to disinfect the chapel before we allow in uh, the other members. And we have the equipment, so we do that in about 10 minutes. To God be the glory. Let's have the recession of him, please. Right.